Hi, everybody. Welcome back uh, to VCTV. So I'm the host and the moderator of today's episode. My name is Sunny Mohanty. And um, today we're going to discuss about uh, decentralized finance, um, banking, financial institutions. So many, I think this is a very uh, uh, wide topic because you're covering many topics inside this uh, investments in blockchain, DeFi, banking and financial services so rather than an interview like i interviewing uh, the speakers of the panel let's just have a discussion um so i would like to start with introducing the speakers of the panel today hi welcome uh, vandana and dr shrikant how are you today hi i'm good i'm rocking as usual uh, how oh, are wow. you <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> Things are getting better. So, yeah. How are you, Dr. Shikand? Well, um, I can't complain. Um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't say exactly rocking, rocking per se, because I don't seem to be rocking in my chair at least. Uh, <laughs> you know, the the early 2009s when we used to hit the, the pubs and we used to have, I'm sorry for the, the noise at, at this part. Um, when we used to have the hello hi gary hi how are gary you? how are you uh, we are I'm good we are rocking <laughs> good to see everybody today hi yes she dr shikam please continue so we're saying uh you know um uh, it, it, it is not a usual, uh, uh, the rocking rocks that we used to do uh, in the 2009. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Shrikant Patsarthi. I'm not a paramedical profession. That is some one of the things that I should have mentioned in, uh, in, in what, 100, 100 shows that have appeared? Uh, 150 at least, at the very least, right? right. I'm not a medical yeah. professional. I am a legal counsel, and I act as a counsel for the Forbes 500. And um, I'm, I'm here to talk. I mean, it, it's, it's a fun topic to talk about uh, investments in blockchain, especially. And um, um, in financial services, it's, it's quite important because financial services is, again, a regulated thing. And, and legal counsels, we will live by this, right? I mean, we know how, what, how the regulatory framework works. So, um, so I'm a mix of an economist and a, and a legal counsel, more than happy to... Uh, share this uh, platform with Vandana again and Gary once again I wasn't expecting Gary uh, in the show but uh, what a what a pleasant surprise it is uh, over to you Gary yeah yeah so my name is Gary Fowler I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor uh, I've done 17 companies I've had a, uh, several exits I was on the original management team at Click Software sold the Salesforce for 1.35 billion and also EVA.AI, an AIHR tech company that I co-founded with Dr. David Yang. I love artificial intelligence, quantum computing, cybersecurity, just adore it. Um, I also am on the radio in New York and iHeartRadio and, and several other venues because we got to spread the word out that, uh, you know, intellectual capacities evenly spread around the world, but opportunities aren't. I'm also the CEO, co-founder, and president of GST Get Shit Done Venture Studios, a premier AI and quantum venture studio located in Silicon Valley that is working with companies today in 24 countries using Silicon Valley as a port to the rest of the world. So great to be here with some friends and some uh, smiling faces. And uh, it's a little early here. It's just 7 o'clock in the morning, but it's great. Perfect. Thank you, Gary. And always a pleasure to have you on BCTV. Okay, great. Um, Vandana, let's have your introduction. Yeah, so yes. first of all, um, I would like to thank all of you for having me here. It's great to meet the esteemed panelists and yourself, Sunny. I think the topic today, uh, you know, I think you have much more knowledge uh, than me in this because you are in and out of this industry. Uh, you know, you're always in it and, uh, you know, you understand these markets well, uh, you uh, more than uh, I think myself. Uh, so coming to, uh, you know, introduce myself, I had my own family office in uh, Singapore and Jakarta. I worked as an investment banker and advisor 
to family offices and angel investors in Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, you know, helping startups from a diverse background, from fintech and B2B tech all the way to consumer startups. Um, I was raising funds for them and providing them with a wide uh, range of services, just as Convanto does today. After 15 years of staying in, um, you know, Singapore and Jakarta, I came back to India. I did investments for a bit, then returned to advisory. That is when Convanto was founded. Today, Convanto is one of the most well-known boutique investment banks in India, led by a female founder. I'm also a venture advisor with Loyal VC, the NCR-led Canadian VC fund, having a core portfolio of 160 investments in more than 35 countries. I'm also a partner with GST Venture Studios, a Silicon Valley-based venture builder. And over the years, I've arranged funding for startups and growth stage companies in diverse sectors like ed tech, fintech, consumer, uh, B2C and B2B, agri-tech, health tech, food tech, disruptive and deep tech, as well as non-tech uh, non sectors. I would recommend all of you to have a look at my website for the wonderful testimonials written by my client. And yeah. this month I've been selected as one of the top 10 women leaders in wealth management uh, 2021. My expert opinion is sought by leading business news channels and publications like VCTV, Business World, and I've participated in, I think, 170 plus talks all over the world, which can be viewed on YouTube as well as VCTV streaming sites. I'm connected with 300 plus investors globally, and I pick up global deals. We are sector agnostic, and typically we do $1 million to $25 million. And once again, thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you, Vandana. I mean, a lot of things happened, I think, and you're doing a great, fabulous job over the over the year, um, especially the lockdown since 2020 beginning. Uh, today, we are, we, we're going to touch upon uh, various aspects, not only decentralized finance or blockchain, but I would also want to know what's happening in the digital banking space, especially I understand that a lot of neo banking, banking as a service, you know, a lot of fintech players, um, you know, in the in the space, and a lot of investments have also gone into digital banking space. Uh, so we're going to be covering those as well. Um, but as you rightly said, decentralized finance is is a space which is very closely aligned to uh, these distributed ledger technology, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain. And, and obviously, you're very right. Uh, I'm very much active in that space. Banking without banks. I just want to ask this question. What do you think about that? Banking without banks, decentralized finance is coming. I mean, obviously, it's not coming, but it's here, but it hasn't replaced banks. But uh, do you think, could we have a financial industry without banks or brokers? Um, so let's just start with, um, who do I start with? Dr. Srikant, yes. So save you some trouble. Uh, so I have, I've been a quite quite a pessimistic person insofar as uh, crypto is concerned. But um, um, see, a bank exists as a bank because it's regulated, right? Uh, and a regulated bank is much more efficient to an economy. And I'm going to don the hat of an economist. Uh, and and uh, uh, and Fabio will will if he's watching the show, Fabio, I'm sure you would agree. Uh, that uh, a, a, a big part of regulating banks is uh, is the national interest because you are basically having a pyramid like hierarchy where uh, you have the 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 i would say the incentives basically rolling down like a marble right so you you cut the rates and you have uh, you have uh, banks which are basically uh, doing your job which is basically uh, uh, regulating the finance of the entire country, right? That is that is exactly. I mean, if, if a country were to run a bank, and if a, if a country were to uh, establish only one bank, then a we would have an issue with competition. We wouldn't have. Uh, uh, I mean, the country would not be competent enough to have. Uh, uh, you know, all the uh, uh, you know all the all the. Uh, kiosks and all the things that are uh, that are possible through a banking system, uh, uh, especially and and two is also because of the fact that you can uh, having these uh, these chaps who are these banks 
uh, also allows you to monitor uh, the banking system as a whole and you're creating an industry as such that's how the whole banking system was created i mean we have we have progressed uh, far from uh, guys sitting at a table from where the the origin of a bank as a term originated right it originated from a latin latin slash italian term banco which which means a, a plank right a plank with a, a table right and currency exchanges uh, so uh, imagine a situation if the banks don't exist then regulatory mechanisms won't exist then the government will not get to know as to how much you are spending on blah 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 and uh, that is an important thing or important feed that goes to the government for various reasons you may call it the pegasus reasons you may call it uh, reasons for uh, you know knowing how much income that you have you have made and so on and so forth but uh, uh, whether the banking system itself will collapse yes it has happened in the past in 2008 we, we witnessed that and i was a witness to that particular uh, crisis and we did have the great depression as well in the us right so uh, we could technically exist without the banks uh, but we will have quasi banking a quasi banking institution as in a uh, institution which looks like a bank uh, i mean i know gary uh, uses uses this term a lot uh, you know it looks like a duck uh, quacks like a duck it is a duck uh, so uh, we will have institutions which look like a, a duck or slash a bank but may not quack exactly like a like a duck uh, which is you know using the same analogy uh, you know like a bank so uh, so i think that is already happening in india that is already happening globally uh, uh, i think that was the reason why we got the mastercard and the and the visa routed out of this particular industry as such because we had so much going on in the merchant banking industry that we had to i mean they were literally they couldn't keep up to the pace right uh um, so i think from that particular point of view uh if you ask me a question whether banks will exist yes uh bank as a sacrosanct institution will exist but uh, banks in the traditional sense uh may not exist right i mean great points that brings uh, me to uh, ask about the the sort of the next question which is about digital banking but before that i like to ask vandana vandana what's your take about decentralized finance i mean decentralized finance obviously is something making a lot of noise uh, from 2020 through to 2021 and i see a use cases i mean obviously very legitimate use cases but you know we just want to know the what's the whole, whole purpose of decentralized finance is are they going to are they they not replace banks the banks are going to be there most probably banks are going to adopt the technology of decentralized finance who knows so what's your yeah. take on that <laughs> so uh, you know decentralized finance had a had a resurgence last summer cryptocurrencies like bitcoin and uh, either are now becoming more widely accepted for payments at the same time the blockchain technology that underlies cryptocurrency and its supporting financial infrastructure are on the way to offering a system of financial rails in parallel to and connected with traditional financial infrastructure now since its inception defi literally decentralized finance or blockchain based forms of finance that do not rely on centralized uh, you know intermediaries such as bank has been adopted to some extent by smaller businesses in developing markets whose needs are unmet by the traditional banking system for example some businesses use payment companies like bit pesa in africa uh, tranglo in uh, asian and are the major defi exchanges to either make direct payments or convert payment amounts to uh, usd back the uh, stable coin for cross border remittances yeah. but the question that stands before us today is when exactly will defi be adopted by traditional banking institutions yes. now uh, the greater transaction uh, banking industry now sees defi as potentially significant growth engine and disruptive force uh, you know transaction uh, you know transaction banking uh, addresses the operational needs and day to day transactions of businesses and financial institutions usually only companies who are top customers of banks are able to have ready access to these services which focus on managing the liquidity of a company cash flows 
trade and supply chain finance and other instruments needed to facilitate domestic and international corporate transactions now defi allows the exchange of uh, trustable data across a system mitigating these barriers to business financial services until now however most companies did not seriously consider defi as a viable alternative to the bank services because of the uh, you know uh, volatility of crypto assets regulatory uncertainty and immature technology involved even tesla's purchase of dollar 1.5 billion in bitcoin was motivated by direct financial value of bitcoin as an asset and not by its uh, transaction banking needs so i feel this is what uh, you know it still needs a bit more time yes uh, totally agree with uh, vandana's i mean vandana obviously touched upon very uh, valid points tesla's example as well was was great uh, so yeah thank you so much uh, i think next we have uh, gary so gary um i was so we're talking about decentralized finance um so do you think decentralized finance are here to replace the way way banks work right now are they going to completely replace the banks or are they going to be adopted by banks what's your what's your thoughts you know there's going to be a hybrid world for now because we need to have that uh one to one feeling and the bankers need to get to know you they need to especially if you're doing a very complex transactions and i i hear that a lot i deal with some of the top banks on the planet so i mean you can do it uh and as you know we've been forced over the last two years to be able to totally change our lives and go through this digital transformation we've been forced to move forward with things like decentralized finance and to be able yeah. to do things online where before that if you said to somebody i want to do a uh, a loan for instance uh and uh they would tell you to come into their office for the most part but now it's changed but i believe that it's going to be hybrid yeah. because you need that one to one you need that customer facing experience you need to get to know that customer and for now it's going to be done um it's going to be in hybrid it will change over time and as it changes with these emerging technologies using avatars using uh, uh very very uh sophisticated chatbots in fact my next article in uh, Forbes magazine is about replicating uh humans right it's actually started so we need to adopt these technologies we need to look at the security value of decentralized finance we need to understand smart contracts we under we need to understand some of the risks too by the way there are risks because as quantum computers are coming online they're able to do so many um to run so much encryption to be able to understand how to be able to crack um in fact it's estimated that by between 2022 and 2027 the quantum computers that are out there by the way a quantum computer is 100 million times faster than the fastest supercomputer that means something that would take a 10,000 years on a supercomputer takes 200 seconds on a quantum that kind of speed so we're this world that we're coming in is beautiful sunny it's exciting it is yeah. democratizing the opportunity around the world. We do a lot of work in Nigeria. We do a lot of work in um, Latin America and with payment companies too. There's just, there's a thrust. It's coming from a lot of the developed world because they needed these systems and they didn't have the legacy systems to replace. It's hard to destruct the banking system. It's not so easy because there's, you know, multi-generational wealth, there's political power. There's all kinds of things that go with it. Cor you know, corporate power, countries' power are based in a lot in the strength of the bank. So it's going to take some time, but it will evolve. It will be a lot different. People are buying off, as Vendana said, into the cryptocurrencies. At the same time, there are thousands of cryptocurrencies. How do you yeah. know which one is real and which one isn't? Really? Yeah. I mean, you've got Bitcoin and Ethereum. And a lot of people have based their in um, buying the Bitcoin and Ethereum on what the value, you know, investment value of the coins. And I've done it myself, right? You buy in and 
you know, the situation. I'm not, I do use them. We do do some trading with Bitcoins, but in terms of payments, but for the most part, you know, I look at it as a, a great way to make some money. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity. So we got to re rejig it. The concern I have is that there's hype. You get celebrities out there hyping things up and, you know, there's not, and then, you know, it's funny, they hype, hype, hype. And all of a sudden the, the price of the uh, coin goes drops like a stone. So we got to be really careful of uh, the Dutch tulip phenomenon that we're not getting into that, but digital currencies, you're going to, we're going to get through, we're going to filter through all this, the not good stuff that's out there. We will come up with some cryptocurrencies that are interesting. Governments will start to, their central banks will start to look at them like they are in India at cryptocurrencies. Blockchain has been, really helps redefine not only um, banking, but healthcare systems because of confidentiality, et cetera. So it's here. It's just now we got it. Now, how do we use it? Yeah, I think very good points as well, Gary. I think decentralized finance um, is is emerging as a tool for small businesses in, in developing markets and developing countries. I would say, as uh, Vandana said, particularly for payments and remittances and small loans. Because if you know Coinbase, which is one of the largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange, uh, have released USDC. USDC is basically a, a, a cryptocurrency a stable currency a based loans that guarantee at least 4% yield return, which is far higher than traditional products of uh, similar risk and uh, smaller platforms that offer cross-border access to capital with rates that are far more variable. Uh, um, you know, Sonny, the challenges, and I know Coinbase because I use them, their costs are crazy, you know what I mean? What when kind you, of... When you're going down through and doing, if you're buying and selling cryptocurrency, Right. It's really expensive because, uh, you know, if you look the difference between what the currency is trading at and what you get, then you look at what the cost of the trade is. It's not cheap. You know, it's really not cheap. So, I mean, we got to and that's going to change, too, as more players come into the market. The problem is security. People want something secure because they don't want to get a chance of getting their, uh, you know, their wallets uh, 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 hacked. And so. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at, you know, so having something that's cool like Latoken, having something like a Coinbase, having tech, you know, companies out there that you can trust is really important. And that's going to happen more and more as we start to go down through it. More and more companies are going to come out. There's going to be certification that says, hey, listen, these are certified. There'll be government approval agencies. It's going to happen. It's just it takes time. And when you have an emerging market. Yeah, I think obviously the the uh, the cost factor. I agree. I mean, because obviously there are less players, and I think Coinbase. I haven't I haven't traded. I haven't uh, traded on Coinbase, but there are other exchanges where I think uh, Gary, you should explore other exchanges, and you can explore La Token as well. I mean, the prices are not that expensive. I mean, it's for everybody. Uh, but honestly, Coinbase, Kraken are those ones which I haven't explored because they are US uh, based and uh, do not probably, I don't know, I don't have an account. I do have an account on Binance though, but trading fees and buying cryptocurrencies are also reasonable. Um, I don't know much about Coinbase. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is that you know, today there was a news, Coinbase is entering Japan um, by tying up with MU, the, one of the uh, banks, largest banks in Japan. So I, what the point is, the greater transaction banking industry, I think now sees DeFi, uh, decentralized finance as a potentially significant growth engine and disruptive force. I think banks, uh, that's a shaking. They're just sort of marrying or collaborating with crypto exchanges right now. Um, so talking about this, if this is what the future is, um, so what do you think about the institutional investors? Are they also keen on looking at this space because of the sheer potential potential that it has, it, it holds for future? Um, so what do you see uh, when it comes to what I have seen that Morgan Stanley, they as a, on a report, the Morgan Stanley's um, uh, wealth clients are looking to invest into uh, crypto. So, so do you think this is this is the driver for institutional investors? 
I mean, I, I can tell you from my perspective, I went to my um, private bank and I was, when I did the Coinbase thing, I, <laughs> I asked them directly, and this is a pretty big bank called Truist. I said, guys, this is pretty simple. Why don't you do, like, you tell me how innovative you are <laughs> and you don't have any way to trade cryptocurrencies or to buy cryptocurrencies. Is What's wrong with this picture? Well, we're not there yet. You know, we may be able to point you in the right direction. I said, this is crazy. You know, uh, so I had them transferring the money to Coinbase for me. And then it just, it makes no sense. They have to get into it because, you know, I, you know, I'm, um, I have the privilege of living in uh, Palm Beach. And so I hear a lot of things because I talk to, you know, some, I'm the poorest guy on the block. There's some really rich people here. And I was talking to him. He says, I'm so upset. I'm so upset. I could have made so much money. I was going to put $10 million in this and I couldn't find out, figure out how to do it. I'm so upset. And this is when uh, Bitcoin had gone from like 10,000 to 25,000. Yeah. This guy was complaining. But I mean, this, you know, uh, ultra high worth folks, you know, of course they want to do it. The problem is they don't know much about it, right? The only thing, you know, the thing is you got to look at the, the coin and how many developers are behind it, right? Who's really behind it? Is it some kind of a, a, you know, pump and dump or is it something real? That's the challenge. It's like, it's not investing. And the problem is, is you start to have people investor uh, invest. And I say an invest, not trade, right? Because they're not using it for anything other than, I mean, think about it. how many people are really using Bitcoin and Ethereum? Like really, not many, right? We do with our business, but not many do it. And the situation is they're using it as an investment vehicle. They're not using it to trade with it. So there's a lot of more to the hype, uh, you know, when you're investing in it. So I think that over time, businesses will start to utilize it as governments start to agree that it's the right thing to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Business will utilize it. Governments will start to accept it more and more, which is important. In fact, next door to me at the gas station, they now have a Bitcoin ATM, which is a big deal. I've never yeah. seen anybody at it, by the way, never. <laughs> so I don't know if it's being used. In fact, I got next time I go into the gas station, I'm going to ask the, my friend Jorge and ask him how many times he's seen people use it because I'm curious. But just by the fact that they're out there is really important. So there's something yeah. going on because they're not cheap to have a Bitcoin ATM. So people are starting, you know, what will happen, Sonny, is they're going to start to do things like that to be able to set the stage and lay the foundation. So what will happen in three years, they'll already own the real estate where the, uh, you know, Bitcoin ATM is. So once people start to utilize it more actively. Yeah. Okay, um, so Vandana, what's what do you think about? Uh, I mean, obviously, this is this, just keep it open because we cannot uh, just uh, focus on one particular uh, topic. So just keep it open. Uh, I think Dr. Shrikant had to drop off. I just saw the note now. Okay, cool, no worries. So what what what, what can you add to this? Um, because I see uh, today's yes today's news only like one of Coinbase partnered with. Uh, one of the uh, biggest banks in Japan to enter into Asia. So mm -hmm. what what are your thoughts? Why would a bank collaborate with an exchange, a crypto exchange? That must be a strategic uh, move, a uh, sort of a motto or a goal behind that, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, when demonetization came in India, people were pushed to use digital payments. When pandemic happened, people were uh, pushed to use uh, this uh, these platforms, Zoom, Airmeet, StreamYard, and everybody became proactive. Then everybody went digital. I think, uh, and then Zomato IPO, you're very well aware of that. Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, one person has to start somewhere. So I think when one person starts, people start uh, sometimes we humans do have a herd mentality wherein we see that okay one person has started then everybody starts following so i think that must have gone in but uh, you know adding on to some points with gary mentioned and yourself as well d5 platforms actually provide an alternative system uh, not simply a plug-in to existing banks 
the decentralized nature means transaction onboarding and market based uh, risk assessments uh, you know that are much easier to scale across businesses wider system because access to relevant information is not uh, dependent on centralized processing or prior relationship and prior to defi a business would have complete anti money laundering and uh, know your customer checks for every source of capital and convince their counterparts to onboard the same transaction banking program they would also uh, not be able to present evidence of performance on their debt or payables outside the financial statement while uh, defi previously solved the complex requirements around portable digital id for businesses and had a road map for providing access to financial performance track records in transaction banking it completely lacks two crucial elements a one to one exchange with a fiat currency and in uh, you know intro uh, parability between different blockchains so that uh, you know counterparties could freely interact with one another and the former is necessary for cryptocurrency to offer a stable store of value that can be used as a currency and and uh, to have easily accessible interface with traditional financial system so uh, you know just like gary mentioned that there is an atm now when everybody starts using it eventually uh, you know people would want more of this kind of uh, thing to happen and i think they would uh, get into this even i am thinking to do investments in this space but the only the wallet thing keeps confusing me so uh, what confuses you sorry the, you know you have to might have to remember many passwords and all that and uh, no. you know the wallet things and also i'm still learning how to do this <laughs> no worries <laughs> vandana this is easy i mean it's, you don't have to remember any passwords actually so those those are not just password those are different numbers not numbers sorry those are like uh, like a uh, how, how to put it there are there, there, there are like 10 uh, different uh, unique words which makes up yeah so there's okay. a password and that's that so the wallets um you once you get logged out you obviously use a username pass username and password to log into your wallet but however if you if you uh, sort of have to reset your password then you have to remember those 10 words unique words which is very okay. unique to your identity so that's for our safety you have to remember that that's for our safety right i mean uh, as much as you like to uh, think that okay what what if i forget if you forget you lose yeah. it <laughs> but you have to keep it safe how simple is that that's just yeah. uh, because of our safety um so what what i see what i see what i've seen like hedge fund managers i would say 60% yes, yes, of hedge fund managers the principal reason the the main reason they are moving into this digital asset is to to bring a, a, a general diversification to their portfolio um some of them have cited that exposure to a new value creation ecosystem as the chief reason for getting involved and and it made a good good hedge against inflation you know as we all know the large amount of liquidity in the market paired with negative real interest rate means that many investors um, you know it pays not to hang into cash in an environment where there is no interest rate but potentially significant mm-hmm. inflation rates so that was the reason so gary what uh, so gary coming over to you so basically okay obviously when it comes to technology you invest into ai uh, ai you invest into cyber security uh, what are your thoughts about in, uh, investing into defi platform have you explored any any startup in the space that have approached your uh, accelerator or approached you as a person uh, to to sort of partner with the uh, gst ventures yeah sure i mean we we love the blockchain we love payment companies we're dealing with you know i've been uh, very supportive sunny of startups in africa startups in india we've worked with uh seven i think seven or eight now startups primarily fintech startups from africa from ghana zambia kenya nigeria south africa so i mean we're also latin america so we've got uh uh fintech companies there most of them are somehow connected to blockchain because they're doing payments yeah. so yeah. 
we we're wholly supportive of it. It's not, you know, I see this as a, a burgeoning opportunity. You know, yeah. blockchain used to be just for cryptocurrency, but it's not. It's for health tech. It's for all kinds of yeah. different applications. So it's and that's the beauty of it because it's moved out because of look at what's happening with security. Every day you hear about ransomware attacks, you hear about challenges, you're about yeah personal data being compromised in healthcare institutions. So we need these technologies. I mean, we're fully, fully uh, uh, supportive because the world has changed and the companies and individuals that don't adapt with it. You know, every time there's, I remember I've been around tech for a long time with Sun Microsystems uh, helping them. And I mean, just a long time, e-commerce. I had the first e-commerce consulting company in, Silicon, in the world, actually, uh, out of Silicon Valley. So. There's a lot of opportunity here, but you just got to sift through it to make sure you don't get into the wrong situation. By that, I mean, every time there's a market. I know when we did our um, IPO in NASDAQ many years ago with Click Software, there was a lot of hype right before that with uh, the dot-com bubble, right? I mean, they had a sock puppet in a pets.com, literally a sock puppet. And this company raised an atrocious amount of money uh, at the time, pets.com. But uh, then you had uh, delivery systems, web van. <clears throat> they just happened to be before their time. They were hyped up. They were just before their time. Now, yeah. so, you know, we're, we're actively looking for those kind of companies. We love those companies. And we believe, as I said, intellectual capacity is evenly spread around the world, but opportunities aren't. The key is, if I am a company in Nigeria, how do I get to the rest of the world? If I'm a company in Singapore or India or wherever I am, how do I get to the rest of the world? That is an, an art and also a science. A more of a Gary, I would like to add uh, with DeFi, decentralized finance, um, the with interoperability, it's one of the one of the focal point of decentralized finance, um, which makes which makes it appealing very much appealing to institutional investors because they no lo longer have to worry about uh, uh, cherry picking ecosystem. In instead, instead they can concentrate on generating greatest yield because of this uh, inter interoperability uh, provided by decentralized finance platforms. Uh, okay, um, what are the hurdles? But still, there are some hurdles uh, on the way, uh, you know, regulatory hurdles, uh, acceptance hurdles, infrastructure hurdles. Um, so what kind of hurdles do we see, Vandana? Uh, over to you, please. Uh, so, I mean, uh, you know, um, all hurdles, uh, you know, I mean, like failure is the stepping stone to greatness, Ani. So I think all the hurdles we are going to overcome it by time. Uh, it's just need the proactiveness and the accuracy and, you know, having those uh, regulations. I believe that regulators will intensify the search for stricter and tighter regulation. And long time being absent, governments around the world are sure to implement a myriad of fintech regulations over the next few years. And the growing digitalization of the economy triggered by a uh, COVID pandemic is an issue that is now narrowly being monitored by regulators worldwide. Now, digital banking, cryptocurrency, and blockchain will be likely the greatest topics of concern as an increasing number of finance transactions occur outside of traditional institutions and um, you know, mechanisms, issues like DeFi, cannot be ignored anymore by regulators. Meanwhile, uh, European Union uh, legislators pursuing an EU-wide uh, regulatory system for crypto asset markets, including uh, you know, the uh, proliferation of token investments as uh, a sophisticated investment uh, vehicle. So I feel you know, these would be some of the challenges which we would overcome by time. And of course, uh, uh, you know, I think governments from all around the world should be open to these kind of technologies. Uh, it's really going to come up soon, like Gabby mentioned, not only in health tech, fintech, uh, in all industries, this is applicable. It's just that we need to be educated in the right manner. Like today, you explained me that it's not difficult to manage the wallet. 
all this while i was wondering how to how would i manage the wallet with the password thing and all <laughs> <laughs> i know i mean the whole aim uh, exactly i mean it it looks little uh, so because you're not, you know ha you haven't uh, probably downloaded a, a blockchain wallet so you think it's yeah. probably rocket science it's not so the whole purpose of this defi is uh, is to uh, offer financial services um, to yeah, everyone yeah. Uh, with your smartphone as long as you have a, a smartphone you have an uh, you have internet connection mm -hmm. it's simple as that no discrimination anybody who has a smartphone and internet connection data low fees user friendly and open source right however mm -hmm. i would say the biggest challenge that i have known so far is security right security yeah. as gary always always i mean security has been security has been a biggest challenge so gary what 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 uh, besides regulatory challenge besides mass adoption besides that uh, lack of knowledge that uh, probably everybody doesn't have right now so what are the, the security challenges you've seen so far and how do you think it can be addressed well i mean the security challenges in general i mean you know Joe vandana is a living example of of the you know some of the challenges about not knowing how to do a wallet and doing it incorrectly you know and setting it yeah. up it's education this is a lot yeah. about education and what has to happen is the masses have to be educated on how easy this is and what the benefits are and i haven't seen it you know you always you know the problem is when you look at cryptocurrencies what you started to see is there were they were being used by drug cartels for you know mentally people think for nefarious purposes right they drove mm -hmm. it into us our head that it wasn't goodness but what happened is that once people start to be educated and understand the value in fact those are the people that made a lot of money right because they invested early in this when it was $300 for a bitcoin $1000 for a bitcoin so it's a lot of its education security challenges are you know getting on to a uh, exchange and it's a nefarious site and they take all the money you know it happens to be set up by some scammers and it's mirroring another group and you're looking at it going oh i'm going to put it in and all of a sudden your money's gone and you just wired it to that account right and and that's what people are concerned about because i got to tell you there's so many scams out there you can't tell what site is what site right it's yeah. unbelievable and so and you can't tell who's sending you what you may get something you know people know vendana she talks about convanto you know they could start you know eventually phishing stuff to you and then all of a sudden, oh, I understand you're interested in investing. Let me tell you about my uh, website. We can really help you. We'll make it easy. We'll keep it simple, stupid. Here's the deal. And, you know, yeah. the problem is that kind of security, it's really important because there's a lot of, you know, as AI starts to evolve, AI can go out and look at every part of who you are, right? It can go to ancestry, it can do anything. And so what happens is it can develop a picture and it can start to replicate you. And so that's where some of the challenges. So the system knows who you are. All it needs you to do is to wire your money in and forget about it. You know, nothing's good. So those are some of the challenges, by the way, Sonny, that's where I really like having a bank because yeah. when I walk in the bank, I'm not nearly as nervous because I know if somebody steals my money, the bank's going to be responsible. The problem is when I'm doing the transaction, and I'm doing it directly with somebody, there's a chance I may screw up or send it to the wrong SWIFT number or routing number, and I make the mistake and all of a sudden it goes into somebody else's uh, uh, account. So I think those are some, the other thing is, as I said, with some of these advanced systems, AI, quantum computers coming online, they're gonna be able to crack things. And if you have it online and not in your pocket, it makes it a whole lot easier to be able to crack it. What people don't understand with hard cash and currency is there's also a lot of nefarious stuff because there's no tracking at all. At least if you're on the blockchain, you know what happened to it. Mm, yeah. If you take it out of your pocket and give it to somebody, you know, you don't know, right? Is it's not tracked? I totally right. Talking about banking, like uh, Gary, uh, I mean, I think the, I also see that one of the biggest uh, reasons for slow adoption, I would say, uh, or one of the hurdles and challenges in uh, in uh, adopting DeFi is that traditional centralized finance, which is the banking uh, system, is so already effective, right? 
but uh, I, they, so, I mean, in the challenges comes when we have, um, you know, sort of uh, um, SMEs when it when it's, uh, when the banking is not uh, accessible by everybody when there is no financial inclusion. That's where I think I think the DeFi, the decentralized finance, because obviously, as I said before, it's a, all you need is a mobile phone and internet to have access to uh, a wallet, a blockchain based wallet. But uh, yeah, it's going to take time. Uh, security, obviously, aspect is already there, as you rightly said. <laughs> Anybody can scam you. But yes, we have to be very careful. No matter think, what you do, by the way, this is just not for uh, you know the exchanges. This yeah. is you know I mean everything. When you go out to Amazon anywhere, right? Yeah. You have mirrored sites, and there can be BS. I mean, I had one time somebody take my Facebook and made a mirror image of my Facebook account. You and think? started, yeah. you know, doing stuff. I had one time I had somebody get into my, <clears throat> hack my email. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, nefarious, uh, it, you know, the dark web has a lot of information about us. I've never been on it, but I hired a con security consultant one time to check it out for me. There's a lot of stuff on us out there and you got to just be careful. At the same time, you can't live in fear. Listen, the world's growing or we're changing. There are a lot of challenges and issues, and we need to democratize opportunities. So places all over the world have to have an equal opportunity to participate, because if not, we're not going to, you know, we're one planet in six billion planets just in the Milky Way. In one, uh, in the Milky Way a galaxy, and there are estimated 200 trillion galaxies in the universe. So think about how many amazing amount, how much we can do. But we got to start somewhere. One is we've got to democratize opportunity and we got to work together to make a, a dent in the universe to help, right? Whether it's environmental, et cetera. We got to, and part of that is sharing information securely. Absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, you, I have seen, I have seen Facebook posts from friends where they've just clearly stated that I have multiple Facebook accounts and these are, these do not belong to me. So please do not accept any messages, any requests from these accounts. Again, emails get hacked as well, as you rightly said. So we have challenges in traditional centralized finance as well. So so do DeFi poses some challenges, but it's, it's very clear that traditional financial institutions and people like us, institutional investors, retail investors, have acknowledged uh, the potential that decentralized finance platforms can bring, or DeFi for short, can, can bring um, to the financial institution or the financial services. Um, and security remains, obviously, uh, the most important component is security um, uh, you know, in adopting this technology. Um, so let's just take some quick uh, thoughts before we wrap up. It's It was a good, uh, I would say, discussion session today rather than me being an interviewer. And <laughs> so uh, so let's just take some quick thoughts. It's just you, Gary, and Vandana. So Vandana, quick thoughts. Yeah, so definitely adding on to the previous point, security everywhere is an issue in any kind of uh, banking system, digital payments, or this kind of a technology. The thing is that we also, as entrepreneurs, we need to be risk takers. We need to accept that, OK, we are taking this call, and failure can ha uh, happen, and accept it, and then learn from the lesson. So I think a positive attitude would help us move uh, you know, very fast. Uh, I mean, having a positive mind, having a, a you know mind which is in center makes us make clear decisions. And I think then we have less backfalls. Also, uh, you know, I could be reached out on my LinkedIn handle or on my website, www.convanto.com. And it's a great topic. I think once I have to become the moderator and ask you questions because you have deep knowledge on this uh, and it's, uh, you know, really interesting to know different aspects of this. Uh, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. Yes, we can have a uh, we can have an episode where we ask each other questions other than me just asking everybody questions for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Vandana. <laughs> Gary, uh, closing thoughts, please. Yeah, so this is a these are great times. For each and every one of us, these are great times for investors. These are great times for startups. These are great times for individuals. If you understand, if you do your research, and don't be afraid. Scott McNeely is one of the founders of Sun Microsystems. 
told me directly one time uh, over lunch. He said, you know something, go to the area that you fear the most, because that's where you're going to make the most money and you're going to learn the most. And go to those areas, find out, do your research, participate in humanity. Our lives are changing. The digital transformation is upon us. Blockchain and cryptocurrencies are here to stay. But do your research and don't be afraid. You can reach me, Gary Fowler, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Check out my shows. Uh, I got, uh, I'm on VCTV, Founders Report, uh, iHeartRadio in New York, uh, all over. Check it out. The idea is that each and every one of us should participate. Each and every one of us should have an opportunity to be able to help ourselves and help our families. Thank you so much, Gary Vandana. I just uh, like to just add a quick uh, closing uh, thoughts because this is obviously a space I work in. Uh, work in. Uh, so I think uh, by working with experienced professionals from this space in DeFi or crypto or blockchain communities, I think financial institutions will steadily begin building the next generation of financial services around DeFi. So we all have to come together. It has to be uh, uh, um, sort of collaboration between uh, centralized finance, traditional finance, finance, and decentralized finance. Mm. I think this in turn, this in turn, I what I see because obviously uh, countries like Africa, Latin America, emerging markets, well, that this decentralized finance is going to empower them, remove uh, barriers for both emerging economies and small and medium scale um, sort of enterprises to, uh, looking to do business on a local and global scale because. Decentralized finance empowers them to go global um, because yeah. of the nature of the of the uh, technology. So boosting both economic welfare of millions worldwide. That's just wanted to. I just wanted to share my uh, closing thoughts. Thank you so much uh, for your participation, and I always love to be back on VCTV with my family members, Gary Fowler, Vanjana Talani, and guys. Take care, and I'll catch you again on another episode. Yeah, thank bye -bye. you. Take bye. care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.